November 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 17 from the New Testament. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke to me. Come, he said, I will show you the condemnation and punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed sexual immorality, and the earth's inhabitants got drunk with the wine of her immorality. So he carried me away in the spirit to a wilderness, and there I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. Now the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet clothing and adorned with gold, precious stones, and pearls. She held in her hand a golden cup filled with detestable things and unclean things from her sexual immorality. On her forehead was written a name, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the detestable things of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of those who testified to Jesus. I was greatly astounded when I saw her. But the angel said to me, Why are you astounded? I will interpret for you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with the seven heads and ten horns that carries her. The beast you saw was and is not, but is about to come up from the abyss and then go to destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, all those whose names have not been written in the book of life since the foundation of the world, will be astounded when they see that the beast was and is not, but is to come. This requires a mind that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains the woman sits on. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come, but whenever he does, he must remain for only a brief time. The beast that was and is not is himself an eighth king, and yet is one of the seven, and is going to destruction. The ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but will receive ruling authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These kings have a single intent and they will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make war with the lamb, but the lamb will conquer them, because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those accompany the lamb are the called, chosen, and faithful. Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The ten horns that you saw on the beast, these will hate the prostitute and make her desolate and naked. They will consume her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put into their minds to carry out his purpose by making a decision to give their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. As for the woman you saw, she is the great city that has sovereignty over the kings of the earth. God, a lot of people talk about the end of times, this, this big, huge war, Armageddon that's going to happen and, and how it's going to be good against evil. And the part that, the part I struggle with is that's not just end of times. That's happening right now. And so often, I, I don't know if it's by lack of intention or just because we're on autopilot, I think we honestly just don't pay attention to that fight good versus evil. Um, we are, as you say in the Bible, if we are not for you, we are against you. So if we are not doing your will, if we are not doing uh, good according to the heart you gave us, then we are doing Satan's will. There's no third option. There's no, uh, I'm just doing what I want to do because usually what we want to do is not your will. We know from the previous uh, chapters that the beast uh, through violence is persecuting people of faith um, to either destroy them or trying to get them to recant their faith. And then we see this prostitute who is seducing people uh, having to do with wealth and luxury and comfort. And again, even though those will become, I want to say, almost clearer without filters as we get to the end of times and that battle will get gigantic um, and very unlike anything that we've ever seen. We have that situation right now. We have violence against religion. We have people who are being killed for their faith. 
Uh, we have all the way down to probably the lowest level is people making fun of us for our faith when we try and talk about it and everything in between. Um, we're definitely seeing violence against Christians throughout the country and, and not just in war-torn countries, but we're also seeing violence against Christians, uh, sadly, here in the United States as well in, in a form of bullying. Um, and the prostitute is already in full-fledged uh, working here, especially in the United States. We desire wealth. We desire titles. We desire a nice car, a nice house. Um, we desire certain relationships. We desire um, certain amounts of money. We desire a certain level of comfort. And if we don't have that comfort, we whine a lot. Uh, if things are too hot and too cold and uh, too hard and too soft, we whine a lot. And in thinking about the end of times and how this is going to become incredibly severe, this good against bad, God, I think we need to remember that this, this war has been going on since day one. This battle, a lot of times unseen by us, has been going on for Our will needs to be done in our life. And God, I speak for me, there's a lot of times that I'm on autopilot. Like I don't, I just go through my day, I get stuff done. You know, I've done a million times before, so I don't really think about it. That's not what you've asked us to do. You've asked us to rely on you for everything, to go to you in prayer for everything. And we don't do that. We go to you in prayer, usually when we're in desperation, um, when we really need something for the big things. But we need you in every part of our life. God, it... It truly mortifies me and has very much this week as we've been reading certain parts of Revelation. It mortifies me to think how much of my life throughout the day is actually given over to what Satan needs to have happen. Now, granted, I might not be killing people uh, as I go through my day, but I'm, I'm definitely not doing your intentional will in everything I do. And it truly means if I'm not doing your will, there's only one other choice. And it means that I'm doing Satan's will. God, I want everything in my life to be intentional. I want everything that I do to be of your will. I don't want to look at my day, intentionally look at my day at the end of the day and go, gosh, only 15% of it was God's will. And that means that the other 85% was all Satan's desire to get certain things done for, for his kingdom. God, all the way back to, to Daniel's time and before then, uh, we've talked about it. Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams about it. And Daniel went on to have dreams about it, about this this beast and, and these ten horns. And Nebuchadnezzar actually saw a statue with ten toes uh, comparable to the to the ten horns and these, these ten kings that will be coming. But we have to fight the battle now, God. Not wait for the end of times. We have to fight the battle today. Today I ask for your strength, for your empowerment. I ask for us to go to you intentionally throughout our day asking you, checking in with you, making sure that what we're doing and every single thing we do is exactly what you want us to do. And initially, God, I know it's going to seem a little bit silly checking in with you about everything we do, but eventually it is going to become part of that relationship that you and I have. God, I don't want to do anybody's will but yours. And so often we say, oh, I'm just doing my will. But if it's my will, it's Satan's will. And we've got to make that really clear. These end of times things are big and bold and scary and violent. But sadly, they're happening right now as well. Not on the full scale that they will happen, but they're happening right now. And we need to be intentionally aware of where our heart is every single second of the day, God. I pray for all of this in your son's name. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen.